I was so excited when I found this book at House of Bibles in Fullerton, a few miles from my old Bible college. This is the text of the earliest New Testament Greek manuscripts, new and complete transcriptions with photographs, edited by Philip Comfort and David Barrett. This is the first copy of parts of 65 to 70 papyrus manuscripts I was ever able to get hold of. I'll have to tell you more about that in another vlog. This book by Tyndale House Publishers has not stood the test of time. It's only 15 years old and it's totally coming apart. But there's some stuff I really want you to see. I'm just gonna focus on pages 27 and 28. In these pages, you are about to see some secrets of textual criticism. One, text critics change the terms so you wouldn't trust God's words if you found them. Two, text critics lie about what the Alexandrian and preserved texts really are. Three, text critics aren't looking for the same Bible that you and I are looking for. Want to hear them say these things for themselves? Hi, I'm David Daniels for Chick Publications. Text critics who are against the King James usually pit the KJV against the Alexandrian text. Well, how many parts or complete Greek manuscripts are we talking about? This is a book on the Sinaiticus by the British Library in London called In a Monastery Library, 2006. Let's just look at page 35. According to the authoritative list maintained by the Institute for New Testament Studies at Münster, there are 5,746 surviving manuscripts of parts of the New Testament in Greek, including 118 papyri. 45 papyri have been claimed as Alexandrian. But when I checked P52, uh, Ryland's P457, right here, I found nothing in the text to indicate which it is, preserved or Alexandrian. That brings the number for me down to 44 Alexandrian manuscripts. 44 out of a total of 5746 is 0 0.00765, or 7 tenths of 1% that favor the Alexandrian text. What if that number forgot to add the three main Alexandrian codices to the number? Well, that's easy. Add Vaticanus and Sinaiticus and Alexandrinus, and you get 47 out of 5746. It only goes up to 0 0.00817 or 8 tenths of 1% of Alexandrian manuscripts. So, at least 99.182% of the evidence is stacked against the Alexandrian text. That's a lot of evidence, don't you think? But publishers use that 8 tenths of 1% to go against the whole history of preservation and create most of the modern Bibles you see today from that tiny smattering of Gnostic desert discards and modern counterfeits that they call the Alexandrian text. Isn't that incredible? How can they do that? Let me show you. So here's secret number one. When they talk about manuscripts that are like our King James, they call them Byzantine manuscripts. Why do they use that term? Because they teach that Emperor Constantine set a standard text for the Bible at a huge meeting in about 330 AD. Never mind that there's absolutely no evidence for this meeting. Westcott and Hort said so, therefore it must be true. So then for them, the Byzantine period started about 330 AD. But what if you find older copies of scripture that are like those later copies? Isn't that evidence that those Byzantine Bibles are actually God's preserved words? Not to text critics. Because of that made-up term, they throw those manuscripts out the window. 
Here are the actual words of Comfort and Barrett, the authors, page 27. For starters, the Byzantine category can be eliminated. None of the early papyri are Byzantine because they antedate, were made before, the Byzantine period. That means if you have an older copy of the scriptures that looks the same as the ones we call Byzantine, we'll say it's not really the same, it just looks the same as those Byzantine Bibles. It's like saying there are no dinosaurs in the Bible because the term dinosaur is not in the Bible. Well, of course not. The term dinosaur wasn't invented until 1842, but there was a term for those giant lizard animals before 1842. Dragon. And dragon is in the Bible 34 times. Byzantine text is an invented term, just like the term dinosaur. Let me go on. If some of them happen to display some Byzantine qualities, such as expansion and harmonization, these manuscripts simply display scribal tendencies manifest in full during the Byzantine era. Let's take apart their sneaky words. Text critics mention two Byzantine qualities. The first is expansion. Critics mean it adds words, but that's backwards. Actually, the Alexandrian text takes away words. So it's not that so-called Byzantine texts have stuff added to them. It's that the Alexandrian texts have stuff cut out of them. The second term was harmonization. Text critics mean copyists change scriptures in different verses so that they mean the same thing. But that's backwards. What it really means is the words of God don't contradict each other. So, what are the text critics looking for? Turn those words around. They are looking for a shortened, contradictory text. That's what those code words really mean. So let's not use the text critics maze up term Byzantine. God promised to preserve his words, so let's use the term preserved text. Suddenly, the definition of those texts changes. The definition of preserved is manuscripts that are the same as what the original writers wrote under inspiration by the Holy Ghost. Now, any manuscript could be one of the preserved line if it says the same thing that God originally inspired. But, text critics redefine the preserved line and call it Byzantine so they can dismiss it. You can't win with these guys. If these Bible doubters found the actual words of Paul in his own handwriting, they'd throw it out of consideration as original autograph. They'd say it displays Byzantine scribal tendencies. So what? It's the actual words of Paul. It's the words of God, not some Byzantine text. So Byzantine text is one of those weasel words. They weasel their way out of trusting God's actual words preserved through history by renaming the preserved text Byzantine. Text critics are not looking for the preserved text. They'd be out of a job. We already have it. In English, it's the King James Bible. Not much left to criticize here. So, what kind of text are text critics looking for? They're looking for something called the Alexandrian text. Look what Comfort and Barrett wrote on the next page, page 28. The Alexandrian text is found in manuscripts produced by scribes trained in Alexandrian scribal practices, the best of its kind in Greco-Roman times. Such scribes were schooled in producing well-crafted, accurate copies. How well-crafted and accurate does this Alexandrian text look? Remember, they say this is one of the oldest and best 
Codex Sinaiticus. Then they go on. The Proto-Alexandrian manuscripts are usually purer than the later ones in that the earlier are less polished and closer to the ruggedness of the original writings. To a text critic, less polished and rugged means the text isn't smooth. It may have mistakes. It may have bad grammar. It may not make sense. My Greek teacher told us that the Apostle John made writing mistakes. Textual criticism proved it to him. Wow. Back to Barrett and Comfort. In short, these manuscripts display the work of scribes who had the least creative interaction with the text. They stayed with their text task of making good copies. Oh, really? Like this? Or this? Or, yeah, let's get the Vaticanus. How about these? Do these look like good copies to you? The Alexandrian manuscripts remove words, phrases, and verses that change doctrine on top of all the rest. So, in certain verses, Jesus Christ isn't God. Or Jesus became God's son after he was baptized to forgive his sins. Like it says in Mark chapter 1 in Sinaiticus. That's pretty creative interaction, don't you think? Of course, it won't earn them any judgment, uh, brownie points on Judgment Day. Modern text critics are looking for a rough text that is incomplete, inconsistent, and contradictory. They are looking for a man-made text. Bible believers believe God's own promise to preserve his own words. They're looking for a preserved, clean, pure text. They don't want one changed by doubting men. The text they're looking for is not rough, but smooth. That is, it's complete, consistent, and it doesn't contradict itself. It has a consistent gospel, and Jesus Christ properly exalted as God the Son. And it shows a clear Godhead and the way to salvation. And it tells the truth about heaven, hell, angels, devils, and faith in Christ's shed blood to get us to heaven. Not good works to earn heaven. Bible believers want a text that has been preserved and blessed by God's singular care and providence. That means God provided a cared-for and preserved text. You see the difference? Bible believers and Bible doubters can never get together because they're looking for different texts. Bible believers are looking for one that makes sense. Bible doubters, text critics, are looking for one that doesn't make sense. Look, if these Bible doubters found John's Gospel and the Epistles in the Apostle John's own handwriting, they would set them aside saying it's too polished. It doesn't exhibit the rough characteristics we're looking for. It's consistent and it makes too much sense. That, brothers and sisters, is the secret of textual criticism. The text critics are Bible doubters. Their definition of what the Bible is, is all wrong. We aren't looking for a rough and consistent, doubt-inducing, man-made Bible. We're looking for a smooth, consistent, faith-building, God-preserved Bible. I want what God has preserved through the ages by his singular care and providence, as the Westminster Confession has said since 1646. I want those faithfully preserved words in English, as the 1657 Confession says. Remember, the doctrine of God's preserved words in English is not a new doctrine. It's only about 30 years younger than the King James itself. 
I don't want OAO, a non-existent original autographs only Bible. Remember, that is a new doctrine. It was invented in April of 1881. It's only four months older than the Doubters Bible it was made for. The English Revised Version New Testament of Westcott and Hort. Make your own choice. Bible believer or Bible doubter. Believe God or trust the text critics. Remember, you'll face Jesus with your choice on Judgment Day. God bless you and have a wonderful day.